That's cool. KTNT Radio and TV Live broadcasting right here in Los Angeles. We are at what uh, a swanky Hollywood Super Los crazy. Angeles party, baby. Yeah, it's magic. It's magic in the house. And talk about magic. You got Jesse T here with the magician that showed up here just out of the blue. I thought it was like Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Where did you come from, man? Magician on a mission. My beautiful girlfriend got invited by Cindy. You know, they're friends. I thought, well, you know, I'm going to be the plus one. You know, she's the real magic. But, yeah, we're here doing it. You know, it's a great cause. Celebrate that 21st birthday again. You know, Cindy looks great for 21, I'm telling you. Yes. That's the magic. Yes. Right? Yes. You know know how you have a happy life? You happy. keep the women in your life happy. Yes, this is true. This is, this is so true. I'm still learning it, yes, but yes. it's true. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me, man, what have you been performing at? What have you been up to? Uh, we I'm haven't doing... seen each other in about a year and a half, I think. It Maybe is. two years? The last event I did was Eric Zuli's uh, American Cancer Society. That's right. Some positive magic right. for them. Right. Right. Um, beating bullying in schools right now. So I have Wham, which is words have amazing magic, and I go through the schools and show them through magic how to have a positive voice. Because when you elicit a response that you're not expecting, whether it's magic or not, the Bully tends to take a step back. You know, if you're like, oh, thank you for being honest. I really appreciate it. That's not what the bully was expecting, but you're still giving him a response. What do you do with it? It, it breaks down that that structure. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it throws a monkey wrench in it. And that's magic, you know? So that's my, my passion right now. Yeah. Well, how can they... Uh tap into you. Instagram, Facebook, what? Website? All of it. It's EvanDisneyMagic.com um, Evan Disney at Facebook Evan Disney on Instagram, right? I get all those right, miss? She's the one that does everything straight, you know. But uh, Evan Disney, Google me. I got nine pages. You'll, you need me, I'm there. Magic for nonprofits. I've been raising money for them. I, I enjoy that out here. For Montana, we don't have a lot of people to raise money for, you know. Out here, you can raise some money for me. Yeah, absolutely. We'll throw together a show. You know a guy. I do. Yeah, we'll get it done. I know a guy. <laughs> Lord help me, and he happens to be a we'll great magic magician. Magic Castle will smooth some people. I love the Magic Castle. Right? Isn't that I've a cool place? Many times. I never thought it would be a part of my life. Oh, is that cool, man? It's so to be cool. asked. You have to be asked to go up there and perform. I'm a magician member now too, so and you're I a pass member. my audition. Uh, I get to do magic at any of the tables that are open. And my next oh, step man. is being hired by the castle, which should happen this year. And then I'll be at Disney performing at the Magic Castle. It'll be like what it's supposed to be. That's why I'm here. You know, I love magic because it is a sleight of hand. But the thing about magic, it's the gift of that one-on-one communication, which is so important. Yes, for sure. It's the interaction, and we're losing that. So communication. All our screens are in our way. Magic's that interpersonal communication, so we just need to build on that magic and get some of it back. You know what I'm saying? So that's my big push this year. Um, I want to help call centers and corporations help with their customer service, internal and external, because it's all the same thing. Right. It's learning how to positively communicate. Will you come on our show? We're on every day of the week. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be there. Five to six. You know, we're we will get hold of you. You're two weeks out, right? Yeah, I'm two weeks out in booking. We After we recover from this celebration, <laughs> I will definitely get a hold of you, and you'll find me on your show. Great guy just checked in, Jim Thomas. Jim Thomas is one of the greatest martial artists. He has... Uh, 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 a martial arts uh, hall of fame which is the oldest in the country and he's got a big show coming up here uh, in Orange County coming up Jim let me know that day he's hooking up with us right now and uh, awesome. hey man you need to get that guy uh, doing Orange some County. magic tricks down there in Orange County for you Jim for sure for sure I, that's Orange County's my, my new neighborhood you know in Montana to Orange County we're going to have a whole lot of fun well, that's quite a difference You're right it is yes you don't have any moose in Orange County. No, no moose in Orange County, not at all. We had one in our yard once when I was growing up, though. Yeah, you don't understand what I say when a moose, he does, because you have no idea the size of a moose, and they are ornery. Yeah, they are, especially the mamas yeah. during cabin season. Oh, forget it. Yeah, it's the mamas. The it's the mamas, not the daddies. It's the mamas. Yes, for sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Winkle, come on. You got to get us there safe. <laughs> no. Come on, Bo Winkle. You can't get me in there. No, day, Okay, Rocky. No, wait, I'm Rocky. No, you're Rocky. I don't I'm Rocky. <laughs> Where's the picnic basket? Hey, Boo Boo. Ah, uh, but Yogi, but the, the ranger. ranger won't mind. The ranger won't mind at all, Boo Boo. He's going to be back here soon. That's okay. We'll put him in the closet, Boo Boo. <laughs> Jesse's hey, been great. We're having fun. Uh, give the website out again. EvanDisneyMagic.com. 
Okay. Is he as wild as he is in, in private yeah. life? All the time. <laughs> okay, just wanted to make sure. Because women never lie. <laughs> True statement. <laughs> Thanks a lot, brother. You are welcome, all my right. friend. Jesse T. Show. Good night, everybody. We're going to be getting out of here. Uh, in fact, uh, right now, we're going we're gonna to book on out of here. Say goodbye to our host and who loves us the most. And we're going to be going here real quick. Hi, how are you? I'm Look great. at you. I'm, I'm in love with this ring light. You like I'm that saying. ring light? Hi, I love your ring light. Oh, my <laughs> God. That, that is a beautiful line. I think I'm going to use that one day. <laughs> when I get pulled over by the CHP, yeah, I'm no, going I to like say. eyes. Oh. The light in your eyes. Well, that's the brown, you see. <laughs> you're brown, you're always around. Yeah, I like that. I do last longer than us recessives. Is that what you're trying to yeah, tell me? Yeah, that's right. And when you got greenish blue hazel, what, blue green eyes, that means you're passionate about those sexy thighs. <laughs> Are you a poet? Is that and what I know you're doing here? That's right. The brown beauty is on duty. You're doing well. I'm oh, impressed. I'm always looking for the blonde bombshell beauty. <laughs> it is an LA party. <laughs> Yes, but have you noticed, so I've been in L.A. for a long, long, long time. When Moses used to walk to Earth, I was walking to <laughs> Earth. And, uh, did he part the Beverly Drive for you, Beverly yeah, Boulevard? Yeah, actually, he did. He parted a lot of things. He departed from me before he paid me, too. That rat fink, I tell you. But no, He um, gave his see, life for you. Well, that's true. <laughs> he did give his life for me. But I actually think he had, I think he had some Michael Phelps in him. <laughs> so you're saying he was a Jew who gave you his life for you. He was a swimming Jew. <laughs> How did we get on swimming Jew? I don't know. The Michael Phelps situation. Yes, it took us there. It did. But actually, in Los Angeles, the demographic has changed dramatically. When I was coming up in this town and in the business, a lot of people had blonde hair and green eyes and hazel eyes. But now the complexion has changed and the industry has changed and opened up a lot of opportunities for minorities. But it also has opened up a lot of opportunities to cover a lot of issues that were kind of put us under the covers before. So between Caucasian people and Everything. black people and brown people I and Asian know. people. What a cool thing that's happening. I, I, are you excited? And it's in our lifetime and it's fast. Yeah. But I think it's also slow, interestingly, yeah. because there's so much movement, but yet every day we're hearing about horrific brutality. and. They never talk about the good things, so always remember that when you watch this crazy news stories and you read them and see them, I'm nobody ever talks about that. I'm a little addicted to the news lately. You got to turn it off to get your head straight. I went with my friend Wendy to Sacramento, and she, she was like, I didn't know you were so political. I was like, I'm just addicted to the news. I don't know if that's well, political. You're talking, I do have a talk show every day of the week from 5 to 6, and we do cover a lot of the issues. But I, I want to come in and talk about one. Well, what issue would you like to talk you about? You pick it. I can talk about everything and anything on my show. I would love to talk about Black Lives Matter. I'd love to talk about Me Too. I would love to talk about... I mean, those are my two passions. Homelessness in L.A. That's uh, another good. one that sits on my heart a lot. Well, we could talk a lot about all those things because I'm very opinionated about BLM. Me too. Very you are opinionated in, a, in what way? Is that, what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. I think Black Lives Matter is a is a, a terrorist group, in my opinion. A terrorist group. Yes, I do. They follow the same they follow the same patterns that the KKK follows, except the media is not covering it. I believe in the Me Too movement. I think there's a lot of pedophiles, perverts, deviants, and misconduct done to boys and girls in this town. I'm a third generation guy in this town so I know a lot of stuff and these guys are just and gals are just disgustingly sick I'm the director of the coalition against human trafficking for 10 years in Los Angeles we've busted pimps and human traffickers we've saved little boys and girls from death and slavery um, I uh, also uh, believe very much uh, in, You're like a vegetarian, though, who still eats chicken. Yes, man. Uh, it's like you, you can like love everyone except the black lives. You don't have, you don't understand their the the empathy for the U.S. and what what happened for them early on and why maybe you're seeing it a certain way because they were so repressed that maybe there is something you're seeing but where that comes from is where maybe you would maybe adjust a little bit of your heart perspective on that it's like me like i i feel like it is it is a bit like you know it is it is sort of maybe missing a thread of it like it's like me where I, I'm, I mean, I, I can't make another comparison, but... Do you know that the Irish were enslaved in this country for 150 years? In the U.S.? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's not just... The English the monarchy. Indians, the, there's been the, a lot of oppression. Do you know who the Indians enslaved first? Who? Other Indians, indigenous people. 
most of the Central Plains people of the Central Plains were of African descent. Did you know that? I know. The thing for me, though, I, just from my own history, my own life experience, my empathy is so huge for what the bigotry has done from the beginning and how it's still living in its unconscious. It's living in its I unconscious. Can't, I can't, even if it was a terrorist, the, the actions were like patterned that way. I feel because I get, I get like what you're seeing and where you're, you're, you're shocked at what you're seeing sometimes. But I feel like it's so horrifying what what they have endured and the black community. And it's so horrific, it's so horrifying that I have only understanding. And I just want it all healed because I feel like it's oh, so. Oh yeah, massive. no, look it, yeah, look it. Just since the time immortal, since man or woman has walked the face of the planet Earth, however you believe they got here. Racism and slavery has been a part of the human DNA and genome forever. It's just the way we are built and put together. Maybe the power, not forever. Well, maybe not, but it certainly has been here up to we this point. We never thought we'd discover Harvey. <laughs> like, look what well, happened this year. Well, the actually, a random a movement. That's actually, actually, Harvey was on a road to destruction from the beginning, he and his brother. Wainerstein? No. It just was a matter of time before somebody pulled the plug and fingered him. And that's what happened. And 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 all the men's, all the men's, all the men's knights will fall around him, and they have, and women too. But when you when you when you talk about African American issues, you have to understand that African Americans, when they talk about their own issues, they talk about it from a point that is angry. Martin Luther King Jr. was not an angry man. His ideology was. Peace but, through love. Okay, that's I. You know what? I think you're right that there is so, there's a lot of anger, but maybe it starts there because that's but that's okay. Like giving that some acceptance, and that's like I think I think you made a great point. Giving that anger some acceptance and some love because the, the that's allowed with everything that's happened with the rape, the murder, the slavery. Yeah, but, but did you know the that the biggest crime on blacks are black on black crime? And I can prove that I mean, to you. Anything in maybe Chicago. You're right. I just feel like you're right, and in, anything that's happening is in, a result of our beginning. That was our heritage's fault. And it wasn't us that began it. Did you know that? I mean, we it wasn't the Portuguese. Perpetuated. It was the Portuguese who, who first went into Western Africa. But the Western Africans, the great tribes and empires of Africa, were fighting amongst them, each other for hundreds of thousands of years. And what they would do to each other when they would enslave an enemy, they would kill the women, kill the warriors, and enslave the children, the boy children. Well, it is a and, little nice to know if it wasn't my exact heritage, but it's we're still perpetuating it. And it's African Americans perpetuated right, now, right from the beginning. In this well, moment, even. It's it's it, with African Americans. I, I would argue that point, and and it's this conversation is great because I can talk about this stuff forever. But hey, that's if, why it's a good conversation. But, to if, you, have but a if, conversation. You, if you equate that to the women's movement, the, the 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 deviant pedophiles that are out there, the human trafficking, I'm the coalition director against human trafficking here in Los Angeles for 10 years. I've actually saved a half a dozen to a dozen little boys and girls from human traffickers and pimps on the street. Wow. Uh, I've, I've been doing that for 10 years, caught. And uh, and so there are a lot of things. When you start talking about those issues that are just plain wrong, but when you start talking about a lot of the racist problems, first off, we live in an oligarchy in society. We don't live in a republic anymore. We are not in liberty anymore. We are ruled by tyranny. The only amendment and constitutional bill of rights that hasn't been violated is the Second Amendment. They take the Second Amendment from us, the right to bear arms against our government and raise a militia, then what happens is we fall to the terrorism. Yeah, I just don't think we're. I don't think we're at that point. We're, we're not. A we're country, almost there. We're not at a point where we're going to be overtaking our government or not. No. Well, that's the thing. We they don't want. They can't because there's 300 million private legal I don't owners think that's of weapons. That's the thing to worry about right now. Well, in 2018, well, well, it's just not the thing to worry about that we're going to overthrow it. That's all what I'm leading to. Able to. I'm leading to that all the news, all the agenda of the information that's distributed today by this vehicle that we're on right now. Because people don't read anymore, people don't digest information like that anymore. Um, with all the with all the illusion and the and the distractions that these next two generations have, and the end of my generation, the baby boom generation, we are basically taught from birth how to believe and think about certain things in our social order in this country, just like the Europeans are taught different, and the Chinese and the Russians are taught different. So. 
when you understand that, then really, who is the instigator of the hate? Not you, not me, not the African-American man or woman, not the Asian or the brown man or the indigenous people. The instigators of hate are the ones that want to create the mayhem, chaos, and anarchy amongst us all. Because in chaos and hatred, there's control. Think about how many other ways there would be to overthrow our government without guns that are, mach I, you know, magazines. You can't. You won't, um, unfortunately, I, unfortunately, I would love that fantasy to come true. But, but so it's not going to work anyway, so it's a dumb conversation because it's not even going to work. Even if we were allowed to have guns and go to Washington, it's not going to be the way we do it. No. So that point about not having magazines that could you know, be murdering 50 people in 30 seconds is a, is a moot point. But listen, I'm glad we got the talk. <laughs> no, I, I have, I have I, laryngitis I, and I'm not I, even supposed I, to I be... Just, uh, I bored my whole public, but no, I did it. They had a great time. I appreciate I you. Appreciate, I appreciate having conversations. That's what yeah, it's all it was about. a conversation. It was. And it was, it was quite right. enthralling. Take Reach care. into my right pocket, get my business card, my jacket pocket. Come on down to the show or Skype in one day. All right, and, and we'll have a heated debate. Yeah. I'm down. Hey, look it. Look it. I'm a Trumpster and I'm an independent. So I would love to have a debate. I would love to chat with you. I it think we should great. do it. Friendly Done. debate is what America was built on. I think that's a now that I agree with. Of course, because that's what made this country great. What's the your ability first name? to talk. Jesse T. All right, Jesse. Barney. Barney, I like that. All right, Barney. All right, we're out of here, guys. The Brown Beauty's off duty. It's the Jesse T Show. We are leaving our environment. We're going to say bye, bye to our host. Bye. Down the man. We're going. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Give me some band-aids and bullets. We'll see ya. And don't forget to spread love, baby. Oh, what?